I need some baby fat, Kamara. I love Kamara, I love baby fat, I love the style, I love how it's funky and sexy and still really fashion forward, you know, it's, it's everything that a clothing line needs. Baby Fat was one of the most popular fashion brands of the 2000s and one of the first to elevate urban women's wear to high fashion. The brand sought to uplift the very women it took inspiration from and was worn by regular women and famous ones alike. The company was headed by Kamora Lee Simmons, a former model who used her own life experiences as inspiration for the brand's ethos. At the time of Baby Fat's inception, Kamora Lee Simmons was married to Russell Simmons, a successful record executive, manager, and entrepreneur. He was the owner of Fat Fashions, a collection of streetwear brands from the late 90s. The brand's most popular line of clothing was Fat Farm, a menswear line. Fat Farm was among other popular black streetwear brands at the time like Apple Bottoms, FUBU, and Rockaware. In 1999, Kimura launched Baby Fat, a parallel line to Fat Farm which would be geared towards women. With its iconic rhinestone cat logo, the brand featured tops, low-rise jeans, and the classic puffer jacket with the fur hood. Kimura designed many of the clothes for Baby Fat herself and by 2000 was named creative director for the brand. Baby Fat perfectly captured the ghetto fabulous look that was popular in the 90s and 2000s. The style was heavily influenced by hip hop culture and other trends popular in the black community. About the inspiration for the brand, Kimura said, it's the only way to make it girls, a little class, a little hooch. How do you think I made it so far? She knows how to dress women and she really accentuates the female form so well. I would imagine the people that follow me have a passion for fashion, which is what I'm about. I'm about passion and fashion. Kimura herself was from humble beginnings. She was born in Missouri and when her father went to prison, she was raised by her mother. Her life changed when at 13, Kimura signed a modeling contract with Chanel. By age 14, she was officially Karl Lagerfeld's muse. Kimura was one of the it girl models of the 90s, going on to model for brands like Valentino, Dior, and YSL. The first people I ever saw was Chanel. I started when I was 14 and I was the youngest uh, bride of to ever be with Chanel and I was the youngest couture model ever in Paris, in, in Europe really. Baby Fat had their first official fashion show in 2000. Because her husband Russell Simmons was owner of Def Jam, Fat Fashions was a popular brand in the hip hop community. Multiple Def Jam artists turned up to the fashion show to support, and many of Def Jam's female artists rock Baby Fat at the show. Honorable mentions include Aaliyah, who sat front row, as well as Lil' Kim. Because Def Jam and Fat Fashions were both owned by Simmons, it was a given that Baby Fat would become popular, especially with female hip-hop and R&B artists and their fans. At the time, streetwear chic was the name of the game, mixing opulent jewelry and accessories with otherwise urban-inspired clothing. Baby Fat offered a stylish interpretation of this, creating looks that could simultaneously be worn in a music video and in the streets of one's hometown. Baby Fat embraced the more is more design philosophy of the 2000s by including bling, textured fabrics, and faux fur in multiple pieces. By 2001, the Baby Fat label alone grossed $30 million. By 2002, the brand netted over $265 million. Baby Fat partnered with Motorola to create a pink Baby Fat flip phone that was sold exclusively at Bloomingdale's, and if that doesn't give early 2000s, I don't know what does. Fun fact, this iconic picture of Cam Ron in his all pink New York Fashion Week outfit was taken right outside of the 2002 Baby Fat show. The flip phone he's holding up is the Baby Fat phone, so in a way we have Baby Fat to thank for this cultural artifact. Baby Fat expanded even further when in 2004, Fat Fashions was purchased by the Kelwood Company. Kimura stayed on as president and creative director of Fat Fashions, which included Baby Fat, Fat Farm, and children's clothing brands. Kimura expanded Baby Fat beyond apparel to swimwear, jewelry, fragrances, and lingerie. One could easily be dressed head to toe in Baby Fat and finish the look off with a Baby Fat bag, fragrance, or watch. Baby Fat quickly evolved into a lifestyle brand, selling items from headphones to eyeglasses to lunchboxes. Baby Fat quickly became one of the most profitable brands of the 2000s. It was seen on the likes of Lil' Kim, Beyonce, and Mary J. Blige, and was popular attire for artists and video girls alike. I think her work is excellent. I'm wearing Baby Fat. I think it's comfortable, it's sexy. You can get every look that you want, and you know, the average, the working woman can go get it and, and look nice in it. It's affordable. Baby Fat was also extremely popular amongst American teens, particularly black teen girls. It was sold in malls and department stores, achieving Kimura's desire of keeping it accessible and affordable. 
Baby fat wasn't pretentious or exclusive, but rather it was representative of everyday urban fashion with just a touch more bling. Baby fat not only democratized fashion, but fashion shows. It's over the top shows drew an artist like Aaliyah and Missy Elliott. Our shows are iconic. We're known all over for great production, great music, hot girls. That's what fashion is about. Baby fat fashion shows were loud and fun and a celebration of black culture through fashion. The fashion shows centered black womanhood, a rarity at the time. One of their most iconic fashion show moments was when Lil' Kim walked the runway in a sheer black bathing suit. At the time, Baby Fat was one of the only fashion brands that made a point to invite black guests to the show and invited writers for black publications to do press. Baby Fat wasn't just an inclusive brand because of its affordability and appreciation of black aesthetics. Baby Fat also hired models of color to walk in their shows back when runway modeling was even less diverse than it is now. Kimura sympathized with the racism and tokenization a lot of models faced as being of black, Korean, and Japanese heritage, she was familiar with it. Kimura herself said that she and her team casted her shows with diversity in mind. It models from the 2000s like Devin Aoki and Alec Weck were some of the models of color hired to walk for baby fat. In addition, Kimura was intentional about hiring models of different sizes and body types so that her consumers could feel represented and see themselves in baby fat. About this, she said, it's very deliberate. It includes people who are sometimes forgotten but are great models. They have fierce walks and bodies, strong girls, but they might sometimes be a size bigger than the one who was a size zero. They have more hip, more color, more bang to their personality. It's what I represent culturally in society. All colors, all women, all shapes and sizes. Rare for the 2000s, Baby Fat was also rather size inclusive. Missy Elliott praised the brand for their size inclusive denim line. Kimura also made a point to walk the runway with her daughters at the end of every show as a reminder that aside from being an accomplished businesswoman, she was also a mother. The gap between regular people and celebrity fashion wasn't as wide in the 2000s. It was completely normal for a celeb's red carpet outfit to look like they just bought it from the local Dillard's and their looks were much easier to replicate. Since these styles were a lot more accessible, celebrity fashion had a much more profitable influence. After all, this was the era of celebrities having clothing lines in Walmart and Kmart so their fans could look like them. Celebrity fashion at the time had much more of a direct and immediate impact on the fashion of everyday people than it does now. For example, Kim Kardashian wearing a Balenciaga outfit doesn't do much to influence the masses immediately. Most of us can't just go to the mall and buy that same outfit, and it's usually a little while before a cheaper version becomes accessible. However, if it were the year 2000 and I saw Aaliyah wearing a cute baby fat top, it's likely I could just go to the mall with my friends and we could buy the same one. Now, I know luxury brands don't want the average person wearing their clothes and that's why they're not affordable, but my point is that attainability was a much more common theme with the 2000 celebrity fashions. There was also something special about a lot of the fashions that had previously been called ghetto being portrayed as fashionable. And not in the way that the styles are appropriated, unaffordable, and far removed from their source material. The brand was widely supported by black artists, showing an appreciation and love for black fashion, much of which had come out of the same communities these artists had grown up in and their fans still lived in. While brands like Kitson and Juicy Couture intended to appeal to the wealthier consumers and celebrities, Baby Fat remained loyal to girls who couldn't spend a ridiculous amount of money on their clothing. To compare, a Juicy Couture tracksuit sold for $155 in 2001, while a Baby Fat tracksuit sold for around $80. What most people don't know though is that Baby Fat actually came out with the velour tracksuit first in their initial collection released in 1999. Two years later in 2001, Juicy Couture released their tracksuit. Even with its cheaper price point, Baby Fat still made girls feel fashionable and on trend while giving them access to a brand celebrities also wore. While reflecting on the brand, Kimura said she felt that Baby Fat was aspirational, but not in the sense that it was unattainable. An everyday girl could wear her baby fat pieces and create a look similar to what was considered luxury at the time, specifically in the streetwear realm. Those who could afford more luxurious items could still wear them with their baby fat and create a cohesive look. In this way, Kimura created what was later called a democratic brand that appealed to multiple women of different backgrounds and incomes. The iconic Diamante cat became a badge of honor for many young women, showing it off proudly on coats, tops, necklaces, and of course, the backs of their jeans. Kimura incorporated influences from her heritage and some of the looks for Baby Fat, creating a brand for young girls to see themselves in a way she hadn't felt represented as a child. In 2010, Kimura Lee announced she would be leaving both Baby Fat and Fat Fashions. She said, After 14 years of conceiving and nurturing Baby Fat, it's time for me to move on and further expand my other businesses and create a new phenomenon. 
I adore all those who have faithfully been with me since the beginning. It seemed like an odd announcement considering Baby Fat was Kimura's most profitable and most popular brand. In an interview, Kimura later revealed that her split from the company had been abrupt and left her shocked. Some sources allege that Kimura had been fired from Baby Fat for being careless with company money. Allegedly, Kimura had spent unreasonable amounts of money on retouching herself in campaign shoots for Baby Fat. She also allegedly paid herself and her daughters high fees for any modeling they did for the brand and often went over budget. Sims is my baby's mama's baby's. You know, you gotta put the children to work so that you can pay the bill. Kimura was fired by Kelwood, the parent company that owned Baby Fat since 2004. She'd even stayed on with the company when she and Russell Simmons divorced in 2009 as they had remained amicable business partners. The news of Kimura's departure was hard for customers to swallow as Kimura essentially was Baby Fat. Her influence was visible at the brand and she'd always been very vocal about her involvement. Baby Fat would lose the influence and representation of being a brand led by a woman of color. Kimura spent her time away from Baby Fat focusing on her other businesses, which included a fragrance and another line called Couture by Kimura. Unfortunately, in the 2010s, Baby Fat's popularity decreased in favor of other streetwear brands like Rick Owens and Alexander Wang. Though many of these streetwear brands weren't black owned, they appropriated black fashions and put an exclusive, uninviting spin on streetwear. Designer streetwear became expensive and took inspiration from minorities without making it easy for them to participate. In addition, in the mid-2010s, fashion took on a more minimalist spin and bling, fur, and velour fell out of fashion. Luckily, by the end of the decade, whispers of 90s and 2000s trends resurfacing were on the horizon. Pieces like tube tops, baby tees, and high-waisted jeans were becoming popular again. Kimura aptly realized this meant a possible resurgence of baby fat in the near future. On International Women's Day 2019, she announced in an interview that she'd repurchase baby fat and a relaunch would be coming that summer. In June of 2019, baby fat officially returned to stores in a collaboration with Forever 21. Forever 21 was happy to collab with Baby Fat as it was one of the most popular streetwear brands of its time and the current fashion climate indicated high potential for it to be popular again. Kimura, along with her daughters Ming and Aoki, modeled the clothing, hoping to make it a favorite among a new generation. They were joined by P. Diddy's daughters, Jessie and Delilah. The Forever 21 Baby Fat collection would feature 18 size inclusive pieces, all priced at $25 or less. Pieces from the limited collection would include tube tops and biker shorts, some in the same classic velour fabric. The first collection was just apparel, with the promise of jewelry and other accessories being released later that year. Kimura said her goal with the capsule collection was to maintain the spirit of aspiration and accessibility and keep the looks as close to the originals as possible. This meant that girls who had been too young to wear baby fat the first time around, including her own daughters, could finally have access to the brand too. By 2019, size inclusivity as well as lifestyle brands were more popular than they'd been 20 years ago, but it was still nice to see a comeback from one of the first brands to successfully popularize those concepts. For the most part, the collection was well received, but a lot of OG Baby Fat fans complained that it didn't include some of the more iconic looks like the rhinestone jeans or cutout tops. Personally, I can see where they're coming from. The clothes seemed to suffer from the minimalism that plagued a lot of later 2010s fashions. Yes, the cut, color, and logo of a lot of the tops were the same, but it seemed like the essence of baby fat and the rhinestones were missing. Regardless, the collection sold out online within 24 hours. Baby Fat also relaunched its online store with the homepage displaying photos of Kimura, Ming, and Aoki that looked straight out of a 2000s catalog. December of 2019 marked Baby Fat's official relaunch as an independent brand outside of any collaborations. Ming and Aoki modeled for the campaign, wearing the iconic bubblegum pink and black. Aoki thanked social media for allowing her family to connect with the very women they hoped to represent and for making it easier to market Baby Fat to a new generation. The revamped Baby Fat by Kimora Lee Simmons collection included windbreakers, joggers, and the classic logo tees. The initial pieces from the relaunch were on the pricier side, ranging from $70 to $300. The velour joggers and hoodie sold at $120 and $150 respectively. The collection's legacy hoodie sold for $300. Still, the collection sold out, probably helped in large part by nostalgia for the brand. In 2020, Kimura rebooted the baby fat tracksuit backed by popular demand. With many young women working from home, it seemed the perfect time for a relaunch. Most of us were wearing lounge clothes 24-7 and were looking for ways to innovate wearing sweatpants and a hoodie every day. Kimura said she re-released the tracksuit to help women switch up their work from home looks, but undoubtedly it was also because the resurgence of Y2K fashion was in full swing. 
The price point was noticeably higher with the jacket being $80 and the bottoms being $70. But at least the tracksuit cost $150 in 2020 instead of it being $150 in 2000 like the juicy tracksuits. Personally, I still wouldn't pay that, but get your bag, Kimura. Lockdown had also given girls a lot of free time to DIY clothing, and they were using that time to recreate a lot of looks that had been trendy in the early aughts. This chain tank top was really popular all over TikTok, and you can see the clear baby fat inspiration. Aside from bringing the clothes back, Kimora Lee introduced Baby Fat Beauty at the end of 2020. It was a joint effort between herself, Ming, and Aoki. With Baby Fat Beauty, Kimora said that she and her daughters aimed to add a little bit of luxury, a little bit of sassiness, and a little bit of glitz and glitter to the day. The first product was the Shimmer Dream Set, which included a high shine lip gloss, hand lotion, and a shimmery body spray. The set came in three different scents and retail for $45 each. Each set had a signature scent curated by Kimora or her daughters. Kimora's divine scent was sweet and floral and meant for a badass woman. Ming's opulent scent was peachy with a note of caramel that represented her love for fashion and beauty. Aoki's ethereal scent was uplifting and independent and represented her carefree spirit. Kimora said that with Baby Fat Beauty, she and her daughters hoped to represent female independence and beauty as an expression of confidence rather than shallowness. She also said the kit was indicative of the collective power that women of color have. Side note, but I always think it's funny when women who are already wealthy start another business and think that somehow makes them a hero for other women. Kimora also said the kit was representative of the opportunity that women of color have. Again, if she's talking about her daughters, they have this opportunity because of their famous parents. But to be fair, I do think it's valuable that Kimora is at least teaching her daughters how to be entrepreneurs and how to use their platforms to uplift women of color. In December of 2021, Baby Fat released a Christmas collection to be sold in 50 Macy's stores across the country. The collection contained a wider array of Baby Fat classics, and it was the first time she would bring back denim. Kimora said that she was proud that Baby Fat was a multi-generational brand in a lot of ways. Her daughters now had a hand in running the brand, and other young women were now reimagining 2000s fashion. The iconic puffer coats, jeans, and tracksuits made a return. Prices range from $40 to $120, as affordability remained one of the pillars of baby fat. Kimura called the holiday collection a celebration of the Y2K comeback, acknowledging Gen Z was putting their own spin on the old trends. She relied heavily on her daughter's input to help her make the collection the perfect reimagining of Y2K fashion through the lens of a Gen Zer. The brand maintained its dedication to being size inclusive as well. As of now, Kimora said that she's still working on new collections for Baby Fat, as well as expanding Baby Fat Beauty. Baby Fat is an impressive example of creating fashions that are accessible rather than exclusive. It's almost unheard of today that a brand could simultaneously sell at department stores and show at New York Fashion Week. While girls wore their Baby Fat in the hallways of their public schools, the hottest celebrities also wore the label on red carpets and in videos. The brand celebrated urban culture and gave a lot of minority girls the opportunity to see their clothing and their culture as valid. Baby Fat connected many young women of color through fashion, helping them relate to each other as well as with their idols. In some ways, Baby Fat broke down the money barrier for a lot of young girls who hadn't been able to dress like their favorite celebrities and see themselves in them. Kimora took a group of overlooked women and gave their fashion and style a voice, making them feel proud and validated. It's also important that even as her fame grew, Kimura still remained concerned with representing women of color. Yes, she put her luxurious lifestyle on display with things like her reality show, but she framed it as a result of hard work and an attainable goal for the women who looked up to her. Kimura was showing black girl luxury before it even became an internet trend, but was also giving girls who couldn't afford her lifestyle the chance to feel fashionable, confident, and seen. Baby Fat was also one of the only brands popular in the hip hop community that didn't center the male gaze. Women were at the focus of the campaigns, and the brand aimed to empower women rather than objectify them. The company being run by a woman was evident in every thread of Baby Fat's existence. Now that the Y2K revival is in full effect, I hope this means Baby Fat is back again to stay and it becomes super popular again. I'm excited to see how the brand evolves and what we can look forward to now that Kimura's daughters are playing a bigger role in the brand too. I think it'll do well since it's always been a brand that celebrated women and emphasized helping black women be proud of where they came from. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you used to wear baby fat or if you've bought anything from the relaunches. As always, let me know what you'd like to see from me next and I will see you super soon. Bye!